You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Home said last year they beat us, so we're looking for revenge. I remember it being fun and just remember the crowd really being in it. Everyone wants to beat us. We have a target on our back, but we just play hard-nosed Bishop Dwanger football and we'll be fine. After losing, we can't really afford to lose again, so we got to come out and win this week. Well, if you're a Highlight Zone fan, you're hoping Hard Knocks history would repeat itself. It was one of the best games we saw all last season as Homestead edging Dwenger 17-15, a big win on the way to the Spartans' first ever SAC title. Now, the year before that, it was the Saints ringing the victory bell. So, we've got the last two SAC champs going head-to-head -to -head tonight as Colton Howard joins you with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton. That's right, Glenn. After a week one loss to Northrop, Homestead putting itself behind the eight ball when it comes to winning a second straight conference title. But with back-to-back -back wins over Concordia and Lures, the Spartans back in the hunt. And Dwanger, meanwhile, has been full go since week one. Saints off to a 3-0 start. Dwanger at Homestead, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Homestead is without Coach Chad Zolman tonight, but that doesn't matter for the Spartans. Fast forward to under a minute to go in the first half. Lytle on the run, bombs one deep to Henry O'Keefe. The junior laying out for this ball right here. What an amazing grab on the move. Now, same drive, Lytle under pressure again. Scrambling, launches another one on the run. Nowhere to go right there. He's making it work, launches one, but that one's gonna be picked off by senior Graham Collin. And this one will stay at zeros, heading into the half. Great way to end the first half. Zero ball game to midway through the first quarter. I mean, Evan Ormsby gets it going inside the red zone. A perfect spiral to Nate Anderson for the TD. And third quarter, the tie breaks. Olmstead leaves by seven. Still in the third quarter, Olmstead back on offense, but this ball bounces off KJ Timmon into the hands of Vinny Fia Cable. Let the big man work in space. He's driving and finally brought down the momentum onto the Saints' side. That brings us now to the fourth quarter off the pick by Vinny, Vinny Dwanger on offense. With help from a massive line, Gavin Groves pushes, pushes, pushes into the end zone and we're tied at seven. Under a minute to go in the fourth quarter, Homestead down by 14, or down by seven, but Ormsby says no. Sends an airstrike to Anderson and he ties the game with 30 seconds to go. Now, in overtime, both teams getting a chance to score from the 10 yard line with four downs to see who can do it. Homestead gets the first chance. Ormsby to Ethan Chambers for the score. Now it's Dwanger's turn. Dwanger hands the ball off to Vinny Fia Cable. The man's all over the place tonight with the lineman. He sneaks in. Both teams make it through OT and double OT. Triple OT, Homestead gets first ball. Braden Hardwick runs it in, no problem. So it's up to Dwanger again. Lytle drops back. Ball is gonna be tipped, but it lands in the hands of Rocco Siaka and in for the touchdown. Dwanger decides to go for the two point conversion. That one, no good. And Homestead wins a thriller in triple overtime, 35-34. We all knew we needed to step up another notch and we needed to get it done. We all knew we could and we just pushed hard. Nate made an incredible catch. He sealed the deal. We knew that here they had something to come at us for. They wanted to fight back and we beat them at their place. They wanted to beat us here at ours. So we had to stand our own and we did. We're fighting. We're going to continue and we're going to get that bell back. We're going to keep it two years in a row. That's all we're going. We're going to win every single other game. We're going to try our hardest. We got this. Homestead is at Snyder next Friday night while Dwanger is on the road again, this time at Carroll. Glenn, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Colton. Now, speaking of the Chargers, 3-0 and oh they work. We're put up 76 last Friday night in your game of the week. We picked this one up as they're facing Northrop, and that was Jeff Becker to Jamison Coverstone, and that would lead to this field goal as Carroll led 38 to 12 in the third. How about Demarius Cowan? Another big night from him. 24 carries, a buck, 54 yards, and a touchdown. 
but he was stopped short of the goal line, and it's Becker doing what Mr. Becker does, a little spin move. He had a 201 yards passing, 99 yards rushing for an even 300 yards of offense. Here is Hunter Mertz with one of his two touchdowns, and Carroll over 50 again, 52 to 12, your final. At Southside, the Archers honoring one of the best to play in Fort Wayne, Bernard Pollard, on hand as they retire his number 10 jersey. Pollard with a decorated NFL career. That includes, of course, winning a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Southside hosting Snyder, and this was a good one. First quarter action, Tyrese Brown using that big offensive line to find the end zone. It's 7-zip Snyder. You're going to see some Snyder D. Kurt Tippmann's got to love this. This is Markel Keel on the highlight zone for the second week. He gets a sack right there. But this was a beautiful play coming up in the second quarter. Roosevelt Northfleet the third. Watch the catch. One-handed by Matthew Morris. Southside gave Snyder a game, but Snyder does survive 14-7 at Jack Weicker Stadium. On the this new is turf truly at it's, it's, it's hard to explain because when I played this game, I, I didn't play this game to ever think to get my jersey retired, to win a Super Bowl, to go to the Hall of Fame or any of that. And I played this game because I loved it as a kid. I, I loved this game and I love to put fear into people. So, uh, you know, a lot of that I accomplished and, and now this is just an uh, added bonus and uh, it's truly a blessing. One of the best on the new turf at Zollner Stadium, Bishop Lures and Concordia. It's a mere Drew with the touchdown. That's the first six of the game. As the cadets are on the board, they were not done. Brandon Davis back after a two-week absence at quarterback. It's Chase Parnon for a touchdown. It's 14-zip Concordia. Then on the reverse, you're going to see Cam Johnson. Maybe one of the more underrated players in the SAC because this guy can play. He takes it all the way to the house on the reverse, and Concordia is back, y'all. The cadets take this one 38-zip over Lures. Final stop in the SAC, Northside hosting Wayne. The legend scoring 48 points last week. Wayne had 42 in a win over Northup, so you knew there were going to be some points scored, but it's special teams making the highlights here. Trayvon Redman with the block punts, and it was recovered by Northside. How about Jay Sean Lambert? He's been a staple on the highlight zone so far this year. He's in for a touchdown in the third. Northside up 27 to 16. And then Kind of a weird play coming up. Watch this. Wayne, ball on the turf. Northside picks it up. It's Lambert actually with the football. Eventually gets it to Arian McCarter. And McCarter, he's got the football out of the scrum and he is going to score. Are you kidding me? Northside with a win against Wayne, 49 to 22. Well, week four of the SAC is in the rear view, but after the break, we're going to hop in the Regal for road trips outside the Summit City. we got a huge game in the Northeast State as conference title contenders Leo and New Haven square off at John Young Stadium in the ACAC. South Adams trying to stay perfect against an up-and-coming heritage squad and maybe the biggest NACC showdown of the year, Busco heading to Eastside. Plus, trips to Columbia City, Belmont, East Noble, Angola, Garrett, Adam Central, Bluffton, and more next in the zone. We are the Eastside Blazers. We're our next zone after this break. Well, if you think competitive balance is a great thing, well, then welcome to the Northeast Eight. We're talking about, of the eight teams, four of those teams got votes in this week's 4A state poll. That includes these two. 2-1 two Leo at 3-0 New Haven. The Bulldogs beating 2A number one Pioneer on the road last week. Caden Miller doing Caden Miller type things. The kid had 134 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, you know, took a punt back 83 yards, too. It was 14-0 Leo at the half. Third quarter, Jakar Williams. The Cam Newton of the Northeast State. Watch this guy just kind of bounce off the defense. He is tough to bring down, and he scores. That gets New Haven on the board, but it's their only touchdown of the night. How about Rylan Crawford here? The kid's a junior, six foot three, 170 pounds. He's going to be a stud when it's all said and done. It's a 45-yard pick six. Leo, a winner, 35 to eight. Brand new Eagle Stadium, Columbia City, 3-0, ranked 13th in 4A. My man Brett Fox and company hosting Huntington North. 
Greg Bolt decides to run it, and Greg Bolt simply runs over the D right there. Trucks two guys and in. It's 24-7 Eagles in the second quarter, and they weren't done. Bolt, you saw the legs, you saw the strength. How about the arm? Garrett Geiger, one of his favorite targets for the strike, 31-7 at that point. And then one second left before the half, it's Bolt hooking up with Hunter Heron for a touchdown. Columbia City's 4-0. They win 45-20. Down in Decatur, home opener for Belmont. The Braves missed the first two weeks of this season, then were on the road last week. They were taking on the Norwell Knights. This is Eli Riley, not finding anyone, scrambling around, and Riley, the senior, with the presence of mind to find Bo Morgan. It's 17-0 in the second quarter, Norwell in the lead. And then it's more Eli Riley, the life of Eli, finding Luke Graft. It's a touchdown, Norwell wins. 45 to zip at Belmont. Up in Kendallville, no DeKalb this week, so you know, all East Noble did was go out and schedule a traditional 6A powerhouse. The Penn Kingsman coming to Kendallville. First quarter, Justin Marcellus takes it in. Seven zip East Noble, who was actually playing without their starting quarterback this week. Speaking of quarterbacks, Ron Paulus. Yeah, this guy's dad played at Notre Dame, was a stud there. Apparently, his son can play. It's Paulus to David Zachary for 53 yards, and Penn beats East Noble 30-24. Big game in the NECC Small Division. Eastside beat Busco on the way to the conference crown last year. Could Todd Mason's team do it again? Well, this would help. Laven Davis to Tanner Huff for the touchdown. It was an 11-yard strike in East Noble, or excuse me, Eastside, up 19 to zip. How about the east side defense? People talk about that offense. Todd Mason's team can play some D as well. The guys in the yellow and green coming up with the fumble recovery. Then you're going to see Mr. Davis, who had 266 passing yards, including three passing TDs, ran for one as well, to Lane Burns and east side with a huge win, 26 zip over Busco. Um, you know, obviously we started out pretty slow, but you know our defense kept us in it, and we, we played hard the whole game. Came out the second half, and and we just beat them, we just smoked them. You know, in the last few years, it's always came down to us and Chair Busco for the conference championship. Um, kind of puts you in the driver's seat. Now, I'm not saying it's over with because we still got three more in conference games, but uh, it certainly puts us in a position to win a conference title. NECC Big Division Showdown at Angola. The Hornets uh, hosting last year's conference champ, West Noble. First quarter action. Man, Angola just happy to be back playing football. Tucker Hasselman takes off. No one's going to get him. He would be in the end zone to make it 7-zip Angola. Later, more of that ground game. This time it's Hasselman handing it to Andre Tagliaferri. And this is an Angola route, 41-0 over West Noble. To the land of the big train we go, Garrett hosting Lakeland. And when we're talking about Garrett tonight, we're talking about the big guy in the backfield, my man Colin Cope. He would get the touchdown here. He had 25 carries, 174 yards, and four TDs. Later, though, Lakeland's Cameron Malavon would go 43 yards for the score. But it's Garrett with a win tonight. They beat Lakeland 38-18. After sitting out week one, Fairfield off to a 2-0 start. The Falcons hosting 2-1 Fremont. Fremont going to the air right before the half. Not on Quinn Kitson's watch. He intercepts it in the end zone to save a TD. Falcons of Fairfield go on to win 44-13. ACAC, South Adams at Heritage. The Starfires, oh yeah, put up 60 points last week against Bluffton. They're ranked second this week in the 1A state poll. First play of the game. This is partly why it's Drew Stutzman and the senior is gone. Pick six on the first snap from scrimmage, 7-0 South Adams. Later, it's Christian Somerset doing Christian Somerset type things. He breaks free, he's in. South Adams, another big win, 55-8 at Heritage. From Monroeville to Monroe, Adams Central hosting Jay County at the landing strip. The Jets ranked sixth in the 1A state poll. Adam Central, you got to be loving this if you're Michael Mosier. The defense stepping up early. The Jets get the fumble recovery. You can't give them that kind of positioning at the landing strip. Mason Daru with a six-yard touchdown. It's 6-0 Jets. And then it's Blake Hirely, a highlight zone regular. 23 yards on this touchdown run as Adam Central rolls 48-7. to 
Final stop in the ACAC. Bluffton looking for its third win of the year. The Tigers hosting a Woodland team looking for win number one in the Mike Smith era. Second quarter, it's Cody Middlestead. We're used to seeing him on offense or, or maybe making a play on the... Well, apparently he can do it on special teams as well. 40-yard punt return for a score. 24 zip Bluffton. You're going to see Woodland get on the board here. Jacob Snyder to Jacob Kimple. 21 yards on the strike, but Lofton wins it against Woodland, 45-21. In the Northern Lakes Conference, Warsaw doubling up Plymouth last Friday, 28-14. Tigers looking to keep it going against Mishawaka. This would help Patrick Zollinger with a touchdown for Bart Curtis's club. And the Tigers go on to win against Mishawaka, 40-32 Warsaw. Final stop after winning just two games all of last year. Wawasey looking for its third win of the 2020 season. Warriors at Concord. Parker Young to Zach Smith for a touchdown, but the lights would go out in the third quarter. It was 21 to 7 at Concord. Game has been suspended. They will start it up again tomorrow in the third quarter. That does it. We'll be back after this. This is the East Noble Knights, awesome. and you're in the highlight zone. <laughs> We'll put up a fight. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Here's your gym of the night. Well, last week it was Carol's Jeff Becker hitting Jamison Coverstone for a one-handed TD. It was a huge night offensively for Carol, so a lot to live up to this week. Let's see if we can top it. And with that, we present you with your week four gem of the night. And this one, oh yeah, it came down to the final play in triple overtime. The Saints of Bishop Wenger. Going for the win, but it's that defensive line and the D for the Homestead Spartans making the play and making the stop as Homestead hangs on, pulls them out of the end zone on the two-point conversion to win by one, 35-34. Man, the SAC just got a whole lot more interesting. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. Key games for next Friday night. Obviously, Bishop Dwanger at Carroll's a big one. East Noble at Leo should be great. Monroe Central's at South Adams. Eastside is at Garrett, while Wabash is at Southwood in a key matchup of TRC rivals. For Colton, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you in week five.